Hey everybody, welcome back to an all new episode of 10 to Life with me, Annie Elise. The case we're talking about today is one that has just been incredibly highly requested by all of you. There have been actually more requests than I think I have seen in a long time. And as we began researching this, pulling all the documents, pulling the affidavits, pulling all of the information we could, it really started to paint a truly disturbing picture. And It's just one of these cases that's happening right now, and that's why I think so many of you guys are requesting it, and it's one that so many people want answers for. And things that are adding up just are painting a pretty sinister picture, as I mentioned. So what I want to do today is I want to take you guys through the entire case start to finish. Everything we know, all of the updates, all the documents, everything we have been able to, you know, source and figure out so that we can try to figure out what happened to Elijah Vu? So guys, we're going to jump right in. This is Tend to Life with Annie Elise. Okay, guys, so I've talked to you about Beam Dream Sleep Tea before. It's the tea that I drink every single night religiously. It is amazing. It tastes like a nice chocolate sweet snack right before bed. It's also only 15 calories, zero sugar. I mean, it's the best, the best, the best. They have the flavors like brownie batter, sea salt caramel. I mean, so many more. Anyways, my point is the last time that I talked with you about them, I showed a testimonial on the screen because I've gotten all of my family, all my friends, everybody, a lot of you viewers hooked on Beam. And you guys, loved this testimonial because I think that it's one thing hearing it from me and when you also hear from other people their results and their experience I think it just kind of adds weight to it so instead of sharing another testimonial today I have plenty and I will share more in the future I want to talk with you about my aura ring and the results I've had with beam according to aura so I've talked with you about this ring before but it's one that I wear every day and it tracks your sleep your energy your activity all the things and I used to have such terrible sleep before my husband introduced me to Beam that my scores were in the 60s. I mean, trash, horrible sleep. Ever since I have started drinking Beam, guys, my scores are in the 90s. It just shows that there is proof to this thing. And it's not just a faulty score either. In a clinical study, over 93% of participants reported having better sleep when they started drinking Beam. They have like nailed it with whatever ingredients they put in this. I mean, they have magnesium, melatonin, L-thionine, all the good stuff for like sleepy goodness. Plus, like I said, it tastes like you're drinking dessert. So... I drink it at about 7.30 p.m. because I drink it about 30 minutes before I want to be asleep. Yes, I go to sleep at 8 o'clock. But it is amazing because it helps me stay asleep throughout the night. I don't wake up in the middle of the night with a million things on my mind like I used to. I also don't wake up feeling super groggy or still tired like I did when I was trying Ambien and all these other sleep aids. You wake up feeling refreshed, more energized, and just like you had rock solid sleep. And again, The proof is right there from my aura ring. It shows that it really has helped my sleep. So instead of just showing another testimonial today, I wanted to share with you my aura results because again, the proof is right there. It doesn't lie. I really cannot speak highly enough about Beam because it is clinically shown to improve sleep, guys. And you can use my special link with my code 10 to life or you can scan the QR code on screen and you can get an additional 20% off at checkout. I'm telling you, if you haven't tried it yet, guys, you definitely need to, especially if you struggle with sleep. It is going to be a game changer for you. And I am just so passionate about partnering with them because it's something I believe in so much. It is something that has helped me over the last year tremendously. And the fact that I'm able to pass these savings on to you guys, it just makes it all the better. So go try it. Let me know what you think. And I will be back with another testimonial soon because honestly, you guys are flooding my inbox with them. There is no shortage of them. And If you haven't tried it yet, you definitely need to. On February 20th, 2024, an Amber Alert was activated in Two Rivers, Wisconsin. This Amber Alert was for three-year-old Elijah Vu. Photos of him show his dark blonde hair and his brown eyes. He's approximately three feet tall, he has a birthmark on his left knee, and he was last seen wearing gray pants, a long sleeve dark shirt, and red and green dinosaur shoes. He is also possibly carrying a red and white plaid blanket. 
Now, the Amber Alert went into effect after a 911 call was placed at 10.59 a.m. by a man named Jesse Vang. Jesse told the police that he was babysitting Elijah, that he had fallen asleep, and when he woke up, Elijah was gone. When police got to the apartment where Jesse lived, Elijah was obviously nowhere to be found, and this is what prompted the Amber Alert, which went out an hour and a half later. Now, while the community was jumping into action to help find Elijah, police were trying to figure out what exactly was going on and how this three-year-old little boy just basically vanished. Now, Jesse initially told police that he was in a relationship with Elijah's mom, Katrina, and that Elijah had been staying with him on and off over the past month or so while he tried to help correct Elijah's behavior. And I say correct because that is their direct quote, but it is nothing like correcting. So he told them that earlier in the morning, he had gotten his own son, who has autism, he got him up and ready for school, and then got him on the bus at 7.30 a.m., before then waking up Elijah at around 8 a.m. and bringing him into his bedroom and closing the door behind him. Then he says when he woke up around three hours later, he realized Elijah was gone, and that's when he called 911. Now, we'll get into more of this later on, but Jesse said that any time that he was asleep, he locked the apartment doorknob, locked the deadbolt, and connected the security chain that's at the top of the door. So there was no way that Elijah could just walk out of this apartment. After speaking with Jesse and starting the search for Elijah, a detective spoke with Elijah's mom, Katrina, who lives in Wisconsin Dells, which is about three hours away from Two Rivers. She said that she had dropped Elijah off with Jesse eight days prior in Fond du Lac, which is basically the halfway point between the two of them, and she said that she was planning to get Elijah back on the 23rd. She also said that she had not even been in the Two Rivers area at all during that eight-day window. Now, her reasoning for sending Elijah to Jesse was because apparently Jesse was what they call the enforcer of the rules. He was like the alpha of the relationship, the enforcer of the relationship, and apparently she wanted him to teach Elijah how to be a man. Remember, Elijah is three years old. Now, this whole thing apparently had started around Thanksgiving, when she was having a conversation with Jesse about Elijah's behavior, and Jesse told her that she needed to try harder to stop it to stop this three-year-old's behavior. Oh my gosh, this crazy, out-of-control three-year-old. So in January, that was when she first sent Elijah to Jesse's house to help correct these behaviors. She admitted to basically giving Jesse free reign on how to discipline Elijah, besides just informing him of the discipline measures that she did not want used. So her examples of discipline that were used were praying, saying he was sorry, and apparently going over the four rules that he was supposed to memorize. Now, it's quite the contrast from what Jesse gave as discipline examples, but we're going to get there. Also, in that same conversation, Katrina went on to say that she actually had been in Two Rivers in that area, which is the complete opposite of what she had been saying prior. She went from saying that she hadn't been there at all to saying she actually had driven there on the night of the 16th, where she apparently saw Elijah on the couch. She said she left early the next morning, though. But by that point, the detectives seemed to have already pulled her phone records and had confronted her about her whereabouts, and that's when she had admitted to being there on the 14th before going back home. Police also found text messages between Katrina and Jesse from February 17th. The first one was at 6.39 p.m., and then another was 10 minutes later at 6.49 p.m. The messages were from Jesse to Katrina. Jesse said that he was angry that Elijah had overfilled his diaper with poop and pee, and he said that he gave Elijah a cold shower because of this. He followed it up by saying Elijah was clean, but scared. Jesse was formally interviewed the day that Elijah went missing, and during it, he said that Elijah was, quote, afraid of him. But then he started to correct himself, and then he changed it to saying, quote, he respects me. He went on to describe how Elijah was with him as a form of, quote, punishment for his bad behavior. Again, a three-year-old. Now, the overall goal with this punishment was so that he could be taught that he needed to be good at Jesse's house and also be good at home. Jesse's exact verbiage was that he was trying to make Elijah understand that, quote, going home is a privilege for him. 
Can you believe that? Going home is a privilege for this three-year-old boy. Now you might be wondering, not only is that not crazy enough, but how on earth was Jesse trying to, quote, teach this three-year-old or make this three-year-old little boy, Elijah, understand that going home is a privilege? Well, Elijah was often disciplined using timeouts. However, this was not your normal go sit down for five minutes type of timeout or anything like that. Instead, these timeouts were where Jesse had Elijah standing anywhere from between one to three hours. During the timeouts, Elijah was forced to either pray or repeat, I'm sorry, mommy. Now, Jesse said that the majority of the time that Elijah was with him, not only was he in timeout, but Jesse saw this as a form of, quote, boot camp for Elijah. When Jesse was asked what kind of bad behaviors Elijah had that warranted this type of punishment at three years old, no less, Jesse couldn't name anything specific, nothing other than, quote, getting into things. So let's break that down for a second here, guys, because it is crazy. Jesse was forcing Elijah to stand for hours on end where he either had to pray or say, I'm sorry, mommy, because he was getting into things. Now, this really goes without saying, but getting into things is literally what three-year-olds do. And going home is not a privilege for a toddler. It is the standard. It is the norm. It is where they are supposed to feel safe. So, I mean, from everything that I've gathered, it doesn't sound like the, quote, bad behaviors of Elijah, that these bad behaviors that he was displaying aren't developmentally normal for a three-year-old. Three-year-olds should be testing boundaries. They should be throwing tantrums. That's part of them figuring out life, figuring out who's in control. What can I get away with? If I push back hard enough, will I get what I want? That is part of learning. They don't call it the toddler tantrums and the hellish years for nothing. So in Jesse's interview, he also said that Elijah isn't potty trained and that he usually changed his diaper at least once a day, which let me back that up for a second. It's relatively normal for not all three-year-olds to be potty trained and still be in diapers or pull-ups or something like that. What is not normal is to only change that diaper or pull-up once a day. So Jesse said that the last time that he changed his diaper was before going to sleep on the 19th, which was the night before Elijah was reported as missing. Jesse said that around 8 or 9 p.m., he changed Elijah's diaper before then going to bed and watching the movie Ready Player One. Apparently that night, Jesse had three Budweiser's and he also took one muscle relaxer to help him sleep. Elijah wasn't allowed to watch this movie though because, and these are in Jesse's words, I put him in punishment. So instead of watching the movie, Elijah was standing either in the corner or by the bed next to Jesse. Jesse then said, and I quote, he gets pretty tired from, I guess, standing there. He went on to explain that he wasn't trying to be mean to Elijah, but he was simply trying to make him be more respectful. When asked how long Elijah was punished that night, Jesse said for probably two to three hours. Investigators then asked Jesse what happens if Elijah gets tired or tries to sit down, to which Jesse said, I'll say, do you want the cold water? Now, I'm not sure what kind of reaction the investigators had when Jesse said that because the affidavit doesn't say, but apparently right after Jesse said that about cold water, he started to backtrack a little bit. And he said, he's fine. It's not like his knees are shaking or he's about to fall over or anything like that, as if that makes it less severe. The interview went on and Jesse recounted the morning of the 20th. He said he got up, got his son ready for school, saw Elijah asleep on the futon sofa in the living room, and then he took his son to the bus stop. He says that when he came back, he woke Elijah up to eat breakfast. Jesse said that Elijah ate some cereal without milk. Then after that, they went into Jesse's bedroom. Jesse told Elijah to stand at the corner of or the foot of the bed and start to pray. Jesse said that Elijah wasn't allowed to do any fun things that morning because he was in timeout. And Jesse said that he didn't change Elijah's diaper that morning either because he was too tired. Not because Elijah was too tired, not that that would be an excuse anyway, but because Jesse was too tired to change his diaper. So investigators asked Jesse if Elijah had any toys at his apartment. And Jesse said, yes, there was one. There was one that Elijah got around Christmas time. The toy was similar to a toolbox, but again, Elijah wasn't allowed to play with it. 
He wasn't allowed to play with this toy from February 12th to February 20th because he was in timeout, because he was in punishment, which that is the longest time form of a punishment for a toddler that I think I've ever heard of. I'm just saying this kind of as a sidebar too. I've done a lot of research of timeouts because I have a toddler who is four years old and sometimes needs to be reeled in a little bit. And everybody has their own belief in timeouts, what the length should be, if timeouts should be a thing or not. But I remember recently reading that a timeout shouldn't be longer for than however old that kid is. And I think the exact math was it was like it's one minute for each year of age because they're so young and their brain is so little that they're unable to comprehend time longer than that and like what that punishment goes to. Sorry, I'm conveying this really poorly. But basically that if you put a four-year-old in timeout for 20 minutes, the effectiveness is going to lose after four minutes because their brain can't adapt to that. So anything after a four-minute time period, it's just kind of like cruel and unusual punishment because they're not understanding. And at that point, they're even forgetting why they're in timeout to begin with, and it's just not as effective. But here, little three-year-old Elijah wasn't in timeout for three minutes. He wasn't in timeout for five minutes. He wasn't even in timeout for three hours. He was in timeout for eight days. So they asked Jesse what happened if these timeouts weren't working, to which Jesse replied that he would usually give Elijah an ultimatum. And usually that ultimatum was saying, do you want cold water? Jesse said that Elijah didn't like cold water, although Jesse wasn't sure why. But he would use that as like whatever method he would use to taunt him. Like, well, you're not going to do this. What? You want me to get the cold water? You want cold water? And like, what a horrible thing to do. A fear tactic for a three-year-old little boy. I understand like little ultimatums or negotiating with toddlers here and there, which maybe you won't agree, but like being like, eat all your dinner or you're not going to get dessert or clean your room or or brush your teeth or you're not going to be able to like sleep in bed with mommy because he sleeps in bed with me every night but like you get what I mean not like a fear tactic so additionally investigators asked Jesse what kind of things Elijah usually ate whenever he was with him Jesse responded he said pizza noodles cereal and other similar items that's a direct quote but then apparently he went on to say that Elijah was still bottle fed and that Jesse was trying to get him to eat regular food, but he was unable to provide any other details about food. So clearly something shady was going on here, but we don't exactly know what. You have Jesse and Katrina clearly taking extreme measures in trying to get a three-year-old to basically not act like a three-year-old, which apparently they couldn't handle, and they felt the need to take drastic measures, which ultimately led to both of their arrests within the first 24 hours of Elijah's disappearance. Now, it's also important to note that the only person who can verify any of the things that Jesse said regarding the timeline of the night before and the morning of Elijah's disappearance is Jesse's son. Jesse was charged with child neglect, and Katrina was charged with party to child neglect. Katrina's charge was a little bit different since technically she wasn't the one disciplining him, but she did know that Elijah wasn't being cared for properly, and she did know about the discipline methods that Jesse was using. She was also charged with two counts of obstructing an officer. Katrina was given a $15,000 cash bail, and Jesse was given a $20,000 cash bail, and they were told that if they do make bail, they cannot have any contact with each other or any minor under the age of 18. This includes Elijah's sister, who has since been removed from Katrina's care and allegedly has been placed with family, although I haven't been able to confirm that. So they're still in jail, but there's still a bigger issue here, because where is Elijah? Wednesday night, Two Rivers police going before the cameras for the first time in the search for three-year-old Elijah Vu. I assure them and the public that we are doing everything in our power to bring Elijah home safely. Investigators pleading for help from the public. Anyone with any information, no matter how insignificant it may seem, please come forward and share that. But not sharing any new information or answering questions from 12 News. Can you talk a little bit about why this rose to the level of an Amber Alert? Just talk about I'm sorry. certain... Dozens of community members, many who don't even know the family, searching for Elijah Wednesday. Just where is he? The boy reported missing Tuesday morning by what police are calling an adult caretaker 
family heart sick and worried. Words can't explain what we're going through. I know we're, our hearts are very heavy right now at this time. You know, we're all trying to be very hopeful. Now the search for Elijah has been massive. Immediately upon finding out that he was missing, the local police department made use of every possible resource that they could. This includes the Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigations, the FBI, a child missing, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, all the county agencies, fire departments, social media posts, drones, canines, helicopters, boats, dogs. I mean, even teams of officers and agents out on foot speaking with people door to door. Law enforcement also encouraged neighbors or anybody in the area to look at their home surveillance cameras or search their personal property, hoping that some sort of tip will be generated. There will be some sort of lead. On the night of the 20th, reporters outside Jesse's apartment complex saw investigators collect a small slip-on shoe and put it into an evidence bag. The cemetery is where law enforcement has set up a mole command unit for the night, but we've seen the community walking up and down these sidewalks. Most who don't even know Elijah calling out his name, searching for him. Take a listen. scanned sidewalks and yards yelling for the missing three year old 12 news cameras capturing law enforcement focus on a multi unit apartment building, collecting evidence from the dumpster and collecting a small slip on shoe into an evidence bag. It's the same kind of shoe officials say Elijah had on the last time anyone reported seeing him. K9 officers are scanning the area for any scent trail that might lead to Elijah. Tonight we heard from people in the community who had been outside searching for hours. As a mom of three, my first thought was devastation. I would certainly hope that if it was my own child, my community would step in just as much as everybody is right now for this little boy. Um, working in healthcare, knowing what can happen being out for this long is definitely a scary thought for a little boy who's all by himself for almost 12 hours. So Kendall, police did not indicate someone took Elijah, nor did they provide a vehicle description. So how is this case elevated to the level of an Amber Alert? Well, Deanna, we put that question directly to Two Rivers Police and the Wisconsin Department of Justice. So far, neither agency is giving an answer to that question. We're going to continue pressing them for an answer. On Thursday, February 22nd, police announced that although they hadn't found Elijah yet, they were still looking. They also said that they understand the public frustration, but that they could only release information that wouldn't jeopardize the investigation. This came after there was just so much confusion and talk about what was going on. Earlier that day, many people had seen a search happening at a landfill about 40 miles away, and there was a blue tent, which led them to begin questioning what was happening. Within their statement, police said that they were leaving no stone left unturned in the search for Elijah, and that they would continue to do searches like they had been doing in landfills and rivers. It's now been 50 hours since authorities issued an Amber Alert for Elijah Vu. News Chopper 12 flew over Calumet County today as the FBI and police combed through a landfill in Hilbert. That's nearly 40 miles west of Two Rivers where police say Elijah was last seen. That's where 12 News' Kendall Keys is live tonight. Kendall, authorities have two people in custody. Elijah's mother and another man who lives in this apartment building where investigators have been searching and collecting evidence right now. Both are in custody. I'm told both are held on child neglect charges. The search for missing three year old Elijah Vu crossed county lines Thursday. News Chopper 12 capturing exclusive video of FBI agents in hazmat suits searching a landfill in Calumet County heavy machinery working near a blue tent. The FBI telling 12 News they're assisting Two Rivers Police in their investigation of the missing boy, but would not say what, if anything, they found. Chief, do you have a suspect right now? And where are the mother and father in all of this? Sorry, we're not going to take any questions at this time. Thank you. The search follows a news conference Wednesday night with Two Rivers Police, where investigators refused to take questions and revealed very little about the investigation. 12 News learning police arrested Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, and another man early Wednesday morning. They're currently being held on child neglect charges. Nobody's confirming anything at this point. So we're just kind of like lingering around and hopefully we can get some answer from anybody at this point. So the search for little Elijah is still ongoing.
Just this past Sunday, the 25th, there were a total of 16 search parties that were out, covering a total of 57 miles in the area. Elijah's uncle, Orson Vu, spoke to the media and said that the family was mentally and emotionally drained, but they've been uplifted by seeing strangers organize their own searches and seeing the encouraging messages that they have received from all around the U.S. and even beyond that. The search for three-year-old Elijah Vu, investigators are bringing in more tools. Meanwhile, the Vu family pushing onward with its own search. We are outside McGee Elementary School. As the search for Elijah Vu expands, this has become a staging area for law enforcement. We've seen local and state investigators and even FBI personnel throughout the day. One new element Saturday is the use of air resources in the ongoing effort to locate this toddler. Law enforcement wraps up its search Saturday without finding Elijah Vu, but they had more help on this day from above as Wings of Hope Wisconsin and North Star Rescue joined the effort. Two Rivers Police Chief Ben Minert says the focus was on waterways, particularly the East and West Twin Rivers that give this community its name. Mentally, emotionally, uh, both me and my family were all drained. On the ground, about 10 minutes to the south, members of the Vu family combed through a wooded area outside Manitowoc. Elijah's uncle, Orson Vu, says the family appreciates the outreach from strangers organizing their own searches to a flood of supportive messages. I think I speak for myself and my family when I say we, we are so grateful for all of you um, and the authorities uh, that are uh, working on this investigation. Vu says he followed along Friday when Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, had a bail hearing on child neglect charges. He says the Vu family hasn't seen Elijah since he was about six months old. And to see him like this, you know, again, for the first time in how many years, it's, it's gut-wrenching, heartbreaking, you know, all those bad emotions. Prosecutors say Bauer gave Elijah to Jesse Vang, who is also facing child neglect charges. The reason was for discipline, and prosecutors say Bauer knew about the, quote, tactics Vang would use, but did not specify what that meant. At this point, Vu says the family is withholding judgment. We, we're not going to rule anything out, but we're not going to, you know, just come out and put blame on one particular person and say they did this or that when nobody really even knows anything yet. Both Bauer and Vang are set to appear in court again on Monday afternoon. The police chief, Ben Minert, here in Two Rivers, confirms the investigation has gone beyond northeast Wisconsin. The search is also taking place in Wisconsin Dells, where Bauer lives. Reporting in Two Rivers, AJ Byatpour, CBS 50. Now I just have to say, in my opinion, poor little Elijah was let down by his own mom, who left him with a man that had a previous child abuse charge among his lengthy criminal record. See, his past charges, Jesse's past charges, included criminal damage, battery by prisoner, manufacturing cocaine, two possession of cocaine charges, fleeing an officer, resisting, obstructing an officer, and bail jumping. Now let's talk about Katrina, Elijah's mom, a little more. Elijah's older sister was born in May of 2017. Elijah was born in 2020. Their father is a man named Jimmy, and Katrina was with Jimmy until February of 2021. She posted a video on her TikTok showing pictures of bruises and other injuries that her abuser, aka Jimmy, had inflicted on her, and that was until she left. The video was posted in March of 2023 and was basically showing how much she has healed and how far she has come, and honestly, it is a touching video. Now, around this same time in February of 2021, Jimmy was arrested on a slew of charges. He went to trial in October of 2022, and he was convicted of physically harming a child, high probability of great harm, possession of a firearm as a convicted felon, battery, disorderly conduct, possession of THC with intent and possession of methamphetamine. I mean, just not the person you would necessarily want around your children. He is currently serving several years in prison, however, has recently filed an appeal just this month. According to Katrina's own posts, after leaving Jimmy, she didn't have a home. She also lost custody of both children just two months later in April of 2021. Katrina posted a TikTok in March of 2022 saying her kids come home from foster care on April 14th, 2022. So since then, she has had custody of both children. There's not much known about what was going on between then and when she started hanging out with Jesse in November of 2023. We don't know if any abuse was going on before or what. 
However, Elijah's older sister is on the spectrum. Katrina has been known to reach out to others on social media for help in handling some of the challenges that she was having with her daughter. And I want to be clear that I'm not bringing these up to bash her for asking for help in Facebook groups or anything like that, because I do think that most of us who are moms have reached out to at least someone at one point or another asking for advice on how to handle a certain situation or how to problem solve or something like that. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit more insight into what may have been happening in their home. In one Facebook group, she wrote about how she was basically at her wit's end and didn't know what to do with her daughter's violent outbursts, and she was asking for advice. She said she's physically and emotionally drained and barely has the energy to do anything else other than deal with her meltdowns and with her violence. At the end of the post, she says it's gotten to the point that all she does is yell at her. If that's true, there's a Facebook post by a woman that kind of corroborates Katrina's statement. Now, I can't confirm if any of this is true since it was posted in a Facebook group, but one woman posted that she allegedly lived below Katrina at an apartment complex in Wisconsin Dells. She says, quote, I called the cops multiple times, and I know other tenants did too because of the way that she was always screaming at her kids and yanking them around by their arms. She did not let those children act like children at all. The kids would stand in their bedroom window and bang on it every time we were outside just to wave and say hi, and then they would get screamed at. Every time that the cops came to check on them, they would come back to us and tell us that they didn't see anything that caused concern, and that there was so much noise up there because Katrina washes her dishes kind of loudly. I tried so many times to tell them something was not right in that apartment, and I was ignored every time. This was also usually well after 10 p.m. that we would call because she was still screaming at them and waking my own family up. My son couldn't even use his bedroom because it was directly below her living room and the screaming and the banging was too loud for him to be able to sleep. It went on all night most nights. I reported it to the apartment manager who did nothing but had me talk to Katrina and exchange phone numbers in hopes that I would contact her instead of the police if it was too loud up there. Right now, breaking news, the FBI is now offering a reward up to $15,000 in the search for a missing boy in Manitowoc County. Three-year-old Elijah Vu was reported missing one week ago today. His disappearance sparked an Amber Alert. Do police believe Elijah left that residence on his own? Again, I can't speculate. I will say that again, when we're talking about the Amber Alert that we put out, people wanted me to speculate on an abduction versus endangered. At this point, what I do know is a child was missing in cold temperatures, you know, winter temperatures, in relatively little clothing and possibly a blanket. That's what we're searching for and we'll continue to search for until I get some answers. To anyone who may have information about Elijah's whereabouts, we plead with you to please come forward your courage, your compassion, your willingness to speak up may hold the key to Elijah's safe return. And Kendall, we also learned today the FBI pitched in with a reward. Joyce, that $15,000 reward from the FBI comes after the Manitowoc County Crime Stoppers offered $1,000 over the weekend. Now, that reward money is for any information that leads to Elijah or the arrest of anyone who might be involved in his disappearance. I asked the police chief tonight if he believes there might be anyone else involved. He didn't answer that question tonight, Joyce. Um, I uh, talk English is not good, so... Um, I want everybody to be patient with me. So, and I just try that I can. So, right now, I would like to thank you for everybody to help my family to search for my grandson, Hovi, to today. So, everybody know, like, we are really hurt. So, and I really, I want to thank you for the officer, or all the fire department people, all the people living in two city here, how uh, to search for our grandson, our baby for one week right now. So, yeah, I really thank you for everybody. So, but right now, so I want everybody to, um, continue to help us to look for my 
grandson. I want my grandson to be home with my family. So I want everybody to continue. Don't stop. Just searching for my baby Elijah. We want him to be safe and with my family and we love my grandson. Thank you, Father. Elijah was being punished for being a three-year-old. He was given cold showers for overfilling his diaper, which they weren't changing. And yet in Jesse's own statement, he said that on one occasion, he was too tired to change Elijah's diaper. So what's going on here? It seems to me like he was punished for simply existing because he was an inconvenience to these people. How can you punish a three-year-old for things that are quite literally out of their control if you're just being lazy, you don't want to change their diaper, and you don't want to deal with the responsibility of being a parent or being an adult figure in their life? Kids have tantrums. Kids soil their diapers. Kids want to eat. Kids want to be kids. That's nothing to punish them for. It is just absolutely heartbreaking, and it just illustrates that not everybody is meant to be a parent. And I hate this case so much because it is so eerily similar to Quentin Simon. I am hopeful that there will be a rescue for little Elijah. Do I think there will be? I don't know. I think it will probably be a recovery and not a rescue, but I certainly hope that I'm wrong. But as more information comes out in this case, I will definitely jump on here and update you guys. So if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, take a quick second to hit subscribe so that you don't miss those future updates. What do you think about this case? What else have you heard that maybe I've missed? I've tried to keep a lot of the speculation and rumor mill out and keep it mainly to facts and court documents and things like that. But let me know in the comments what else you've heard about this case and what you think. Where is Elijah? All right, guys, until the next one, stay safe. Bye.